Hi everybody, welcome to Happy Healthy You Special Edition. I'm Connie Bowman and I'm here at Mind Body Week DC in Silver Spring, Maryland, where we're talking to some of the leading edge pioneers in mind body medicine. And it's sponsored by the Mindfulness Center in Bethesda, Maryland, which is a nonprofit wellness center that promotes health and self healing for individuals and the community through charitable, educational, and research programs in mind body practices. And I'm here with John Gloa, PhD. He was one of the first speakers today. And he's a longtime friend of the Mindfulness Center. He's a former program officer at NIH. And you worked on funding some of these studies that have brought us many of these mindfulness practices. Uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh, we funded a lot of studies and our focus was on making those studies as good as they could be so that the conclusions were that were derived from them were as reproducible as uh, they could be. Uh, uh, I'm a behavioral scientist by background and uh, so part of the science is being able to reproduce the results. Uh, the more times you can reproduce it, uh, the better you understand it, or alternatively, the, the less you can, uh, the more confused you will get. So, <laughs> yes. uh, Yeah, and there are so many modalities now that people are finding relief for pain. And you mentioned in your talk that the primary reason that people are coming to doctors now is for pain management. What are some of the modalities that, are, that you have found in your research are working? Well, certainly the movement uh, modalities, uh, Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, uh, and even exercise uh, can provide some relief. Uh, the meditative approaches are, are thought to provide some relief. Uh, the, the evidence is uh, interesting uh, it's, uh, but the quality of the evidence still needs to be improved. Uh, so uh, these are not unlike clinical trials with drugs in the sense that uh, sometimes uh, uh, approaches are found that are less effective, but unlike the uh, clinical trials with drugs, uh, the dose and, and the difference between the control group and the treatment group uh, are very constant there. As you mentioned with the meditative approaches or any of the CAM approaches, they're often a mixed bag of approaches and particularly in the clinician's office as opposed to the research setting. Uh, we don't have any problem with clinicians uh, trying a, a mixed bag of approaches because that's individualized medicine and that often works best. But for research purposes, we'd like to be a little bit more defined and what the question is and how it's being asked. And yes. So then we can interpret the results. There's not a whole lot of room for intuition in, in your field, which is good because we need that. We need the right and left side of the brain. You mentioned in your talk also that um, meditation and the effects of meditation, Tai Chi, uh, yoga, some of these modalities, practices, are, is cumulative. Whereas with a drug, an opiate, we see immediate result and then that wears off and then the pain comes back. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? How, how does that work? Certainly, uh, there's, uh, I see it actually as a two-phase process. One is they have to be learned. Uh, they have to be acquired. And uh, uh, that can take uh, varying amounts of time, uh, uh, certainly depending upon the clinical condition of the person. Uh, an interesting question is whether uh, uh, all of the skills can be acquired at, at all or not. But uh, once they are acquired and once people are performing at a level with whatever the, the skill is, whether it's uh, simply a cognitive skill or whether it's a movement skill, then there's another phase where one asks whether the practice has to be continued at some rate in order to maintain its benefit. Uh, and that's something that uh, it's hard to do. It's called the follow-up of the study. Uh, uh, many studies now have a 12-month follow-up, but we don't know uh, very often for periods greater than that, whether there's uh, reliable follow-up effects. And, and they're difficult. It's hard to, to find the people. They disappear. Uh, sometimes uh, health issues take the people that um, uh, interfere with answering right. the question. So, Are you a meditator? Uh, I have learned to meditate, but I don't regularly meditate. Are you a dabbling meditator? You dabble? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm... I, uh, uh, I'm uh, for one reason or not. Uh, You're a not. researcher. You're, I, you have I, an interest in it. 
uh, I wouldn't want to bias my point of view too much. Okay. Oh, okay, of course, of course. Well, you mentioned also in your talk that pain changes the brain. So with that in mind, does meditation change the brain well, as well? Well, both of those answers are yes. And uh, the quest is uh, to see whether those changes are, are bidirectional. Uh, uh, pain decreases gray matter content. Uh, meditation increases it in different areas. Uh, uh, but the question would be, in the same area? Would that be a way to treat? Is that the mechanism of how meditation has a positive effect on pain? Um, we don't know that yet, but uh, those, are, uh, those are the types of questions. Certainly, uh, uh, I spoke about uh, fingerprints for pain in the brain, different uh, patterns of activity that if they can be uh, resolved back to the fingerprint of a normal person, that is a good biomarker for treatment. Uh, and the thing that's interesting about that is that then you can delve in deeper to across the brain areas to find out the sequence of events that occurs. Uh, what is causal? What, what occurred first? What occurred second? What occurred third? And which ones of those effects perhaps are necessary and, or sufficient to produce the change? So, uh, Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gloa, for your unbiased <laughs> interest in this subject because we need people like you. We need you to continue this research and, and make credible all of these modalities that, that I love and, and a lot of our viewers and listeners also love. So thank you for your, for your uh, help with this. Uh, thank and you. For more information about the Mindfulness Center, you can go to themindfulnesscenter.org. Thanks, you guys. Go out and have a happy, healthy day.